Hey guys, Pittsburgh White Shorts back again with another deck tech. Um, today I'm joined by Carmen, and What's we are going to be going over my Raze Soulon deck I brewed up when the new set of Bang Dream came out. Yep, lots um, of I, unique accelerate stuff in this. Uh, that's sort of like their thing for this band, right? It's all accelerate. Yeah, it's it's a pretty self-contained, uh, pretty self-contained deck. I, I usually don't make just mono band decks, but this. Yeah, it, it, like if you're a newer player looking to get into the game, this is a really like surprisingly budget deck to build, um, especially if you don't run the layer rickies. It's absurdly cheap and yeah. pretty good for what you're paying for it. Yeah, the um, Andy and I were actually talking about this before we started recording. Uh, the the band like Bang Dream has gotten so band locked at this point. It's like almost the play to sort of play a mono band deck. The mixed band deck is like. Slowly creeping, like, lower and lower. But that's a discussion for another time. Let's jump into the cards here. So, level 0, I believe I have 17 of them, looks like. Yep. So, the two most important ones at level 0 are probably the Supreme Music Layer and Supreme Music Chu 2. Chu squared? Chu 2. Chu 2. Chu 2. Um... Um, yeah, the Lair Ricky is probably the most notable card that came out in the new Bang Dream set. Um, on play, you get a mill two cards. Uh, she gets an extra thousand power for each character you mill. So, for level zero, you're going to be swinging for three or four thousand, which is really nice. And, uh, typically effects. So, pay one, put the top card of your deck into your clock, and you can, uh, choose a, a lower, lower character in your waiting room and add it back to your hand when you play it. So it really helps uh, consistently setting up your level 1 combo, or like on turn 2, if you just need another level Attacker, 0 to yeah. attack with, you can just you know, grab one of your level 0s. Let's you aggressively uh, try field, uh, gets you into what you need. Really ups the consistency of the deck. Make sure you can't get level lock. Always a problem for Bang Dream in the past. They were like a notoriously easy to level lock set because they didn't really have access to this kind of effect, and the ones that they do were either super ban-locked or had bad timing that your opponent could deny. Um, so cards just really important, not only in this deck, but just in general. Yeah, the, the first deck mill is super nice on it. And, and even though you can run it in any Bang Dream deck, because just general music trade it works off of, uh, a lot of the Reze Sulan stuff is trait locked to Reze Sulan, so... Yeah. She's extra good in this deck, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then the uh, Brainstormer, um, just a typical rest itself Brainstormer. For each climax you hit, you get a searcher deck for a Raz character. Um, and whenever you use Accelerate, you get to choose one of your characters and give them a thousand power for the turn. Um, this can happen on your turn or your opponent's turn. Uh, notably, as well, it's not locked to just once per turn. So at higher levels, Razor Sulan gets access to a lot of different accelerate effects, and you can accelerate multiple times per turn, meaning you can get the thousand power from this two, three times if you want it. Just something important to keep in mind, especially if you're fielding, if you have like two of these in your back row. Yeah. You get multiple accelerates off, that's a lot of power. Playing into this, it almost felt like playing into like Afterglow, where they just get arbitrarily ridiculous amounts of power on their turn. But it all kicks off Accelerate instead of just being, you know, I give this thing power. It's all Accelerate's energy. Yeah, right. I'm a big fan of Accelerate. It's a cool mechanic, and I'm glad to finally see it getting some newer support. Instead but, of just um, being Excel World. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to uh, uh, the next level as we got Raise Your Hands, Chew 2. She is a 2 of in the deck. Um, when you play her, you can discard a card from your hand. And then you reveal the top card of your deck, and you get to salvage a character with level equal to or lower than that revealed card's level. So it's kind of like the Rico from Love Live Sunshine effect, where you reveal a top card and salvage something of that level. So um, the, the climax combos in this deck are book and bar. So sometimes we get a lot of climaxes stuck in the hand, so this is a good way to get rid of them. Good cost uh, to also, stitch out. Good cost of stitch out. Um, 
Also lets you check the top card of your deck for Accelerate, so you know what you're putting into your clock. Um, I guess it's important to note, too, with uh, Reza Salon that um, not all of your Accelerate effects are coming from top of the deck. A lot of them come from your waiting room, actually. You choose the card. Um, but some of them still come from the clock, like this next card. So being able to check the top card of your deck and make sure it's not like a climax you're randomly clocking is pretty nice. Um, and the next card, Unstoppable Pareo. She's 2,500 power, and when you attack with it, or you can accelerate it at the start of your uh, climax step, and when you attack with it, you get to search your deck for a Raz character, add it to your hand, and then discard a card. So by taking one damage, you get a free drop search. Good um, filter not, cards for the deck. Yeah, I'm not usually a huge fan of these sort of cards on Accelerate. I, I know Excel World has like a similar profile that, that can not be bothered to run, but um, in this set we have a an actual level one combo we're trying to aggressively set up with as many copies as possible. So being able to get a search off without having to pay a stock or like the fact that you can do this turn one also because you don't have to pay stock is really nice. Yeah, you get to start filtering early. Just drop search turn one. You can start filtering early, and it's just additional blue fix for the deck because I found um, I was needing a little more blue fix at one point, so it slotted yeah. in nicely. So especially because you have to hit blue for level one, so mm -hmm. have to make sure we get it early. All right, moving on here. Uh, there's the promo here, the box topper, which is a on play. You, if your opponent has one or fewer characters, choose their cost zero or lower character in the center stage and bottom deck it. So that's sort of a quote-unquote anti-runner effect, uh, since your opponent typically would only have one card at that point. And then it also is a Shimakai on attack to help you get over stuff. Yep, 500 extra power times a uh, number of characters you have, number of other characters. Um, this is mainly in the deck because the combo at level one is on reverse. So you need to get a lot of power, and it doesn't get too big on its own. So having additional ways to get to the required power to get a reverse is super nice. And most good players will just only play one level zero on their first turn anyway. So if you're going second, this is like a really nice out to some otherwise really nasty cards to deal with, like um, center runners, thirty-five hundred center runners, player chaser, or like the, or does he get a level? I don't know, but um. Oh, it still works. Cost zero. Yeah, lots of really annoying level zeros that can just be obnoxious to deal with in the early game. Yeah, I guess you could even hit their level one all, or, or one of their level ones if they have a, they only a had single one. level one character on field. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then the Supreme Music Masking, I have two of her as well. She is a 3,000 power beater. Can't side attack, which doesn't matter. And when you play it, you can put a card in your hand into your stock. Um, this deck gets pretty stock intensive at the higher level, specifically at two. It's really nice to have a lot of stock going into there. Um, and even level one, since there's a few costed cards at level one we play. Um, and the deck can plus pretty hard off the accelerate effect. So being able to have an effect that lets you put cards from your hand and somewhere else so you don't over plus is something I always like to have. Just a good way to make sure you can like play your early play or something like that, even in bad games. Let's you exchange hand for stock. These cards yeah. are good or bad depending on what you're spending that stock on. Um, but thankfully Rass has things it likes to spend stock on. Even just normal level twos. Yeah, the deck's pretty stock hungry at level two. And I found I use this a lot going into my level three, just to be able to get multiple, like, like that extra stock and help you get an extra finisher off. Yeah, since and, the attack. And you don't really care about your list. hand in the. Yeah, you don't really care about your hand in the end game with this combo, in this deck, either. So, pretty nice. And even when the stock effect's not useful, it still sits at three thousand, which is pretty big for a level zero. Basically, an oversize. All right, moving um, on. Rounding out the level zeros. We have one more Brainstormer. It is a spammable Brainstormer, Freshman Lock and Asuka. Um, you don't have to tap it for this effect, so you can do it as many times as you want. For each uh, climax you reveal, you choose a music character in your waiting room, add it to hand, then discard. So it doesn't actually plus you, but 
Uh, most of the effects in this deck will search, so I like being able to have access to the waiting room to be able to get my level 1 combo, for example, if um, I end up milling all the copies early, especially since there's a lot of mill early on with the, um, the Ricky. Mm -hmm. And then I have a copy, one copy of the Drop Searcher. Just on play, pay one, discard a card, search. Um, similar, I, I guess it fills a similar role to the um, Accelerate Pareo from earlier, but... Sometimes you um, need main phase tutor, so... I, main phase tutor is important, and the fact that you, you, you gotta be careful, Accelerate. You don't wanna overdo it, or you'll just kill yourself. That is how it works. And then it also goes to bottom deck, because it's a 3k... This is kind of similar to like the um, the Kendo Bootcamp Sugu, like these 3k drop searches. Um, it's it's the same exact card, actually. Yeah, the, the Sugu is like your whole board can't side, which is probably oh, worse sorry. than this. Like, it goes to, goes to bottom deck is pretty whatever. And in fact, you can even use it to your advantage sometimes. So, yeah, cool card. Unfortunately, That's not as good as spaghetti. Yeah. Not as good as Spaghetti, even at 3k for general band decks, but very good here. Mm -hmm. All right, moving into level one. Level one, uh, this is probably my favorite card in the deck, a uh, competent producer, Chu Tu. Uh, she's a climax combo with the book. When you get a reverse with, well, not just it, but when you attack with it, you choose one of your other characters, you give them a thousand power, and on reverse, uh, the character that you designate to get the reverse will get to search for you. I don't know if I did a very good job of explaining that. So um, it's like a Shimakaze <laughs> without the drawback of a Shimakaze, where you're like swinging in at seven every single lane. You can possibly swing in with not even this card, because this card's kind of dinky. You could possibly swing in with a different card that's bigger. Or stack all of your reverses in one lane if your opponent leaves at level zero. It can't run away or can't do anything. So by stacking all your pluses in one lane, it gets a lot more consistent than a normal Shimakaze. Yeah, the the big drawbacks to normal Shimakaze, like just on reverse search or salvage effects, is that um, if your opponent has any sort of like runners or any way to just get out of or way just of a combat, backup, just like anything, it, yeah, just like a backup, it, it just can completely shut down your ability to search. Or if, if they leave open spots on their field, for instance, too, you might only be able to get one of these off or two normally. But with the, the Chu 2, you can always try field it. And as long as you can get a reverse on one lane, you get all three of your searches. I think this is really like the future for Shimakaze combos. Like, anytime I play a Shimakaze combo going forward, I'm going to compare it back to this card. Because this one feels yeah. really, really good to play. It the just fact that you doesn't to... feel like garbage, right? Like, you play a normal Shimakaze, and it's like, it's fine until you play against that one deck that has literally any tool to deny you. And then you're like, damn, this combo sucks. Why like are we still playing Shimakazes someone, in 2020? Yeah, it's so fucking annoying when someone runs away from your reverse, or like, you just can't quite get to enough power. But yeah. the fact that this gives not only the search effect, but the thousand power wherever you want and you can just stack them all on one thing even just if you just try field chew too so that gets to eight if, right if you pop, put them all into one lane that's five six seven eight thousand power yeah it's definitely enough to get a reverse on their weakest lane so yeah i like this a lot in terms of like just a level one on reverse combo i hope this tracks and they stop printing shimakazes because shimakaze well i mean like you know uh, the, the spoiler alert in terms of JP is that they haven't, because we've seen sets come out after the set, but uh, I would like to see this in the future and some of the newly announced stuff. Instead of them printing Shimakazes at, like, rare and double rare, Shimakaze is, like, almost a common combo, I think, in, the, in this I mean, day and age. It, it, might, it might be too good of an effect if, you know, they put it on just anything. Yeah. This I mean, is kind of locked into only Raz characters. Only so Raz, mix yeah. it with the other bands, but it's, it's been really good to play with. Definitely the best card in the deck, I think. Um, going into a few other level ones. Um, we have Blunt Kindness Masking. She's a 1-1 one, one back row card. You can rest it and give 3,000 power to one of your Rask characters for the turn. So if 8,000 power wasn't enough, you can give it a shot in the arm with this. Pairs really nicely with the uh, Chutu 
to help you get the reverse. Um, and just retains its usefulness all game long because even at level 2, when your opponent has early plays down or even a really big top end threat, you can 3,000 is a lot of power and helps you get over. And it also has uh, this other effect where if you have four or more cards in your clock, you can pay one and heal after you use Accelerate. So it turns your Accelerates from block yourself one, provided they're one from top of deck, into like either just pay one if it's a waiting room Accelerate, or a pay one mill one instead of clocking yourself one, which is a really cool way to like, you know, exchange, like you turn all your Accelerate effects into the sort of like pay one. Which uh, makes them like really, really appealing. Yeah, there's there's definitely like a, a dream board I try to set up with Ras when I hit level two. Um, this is a big part of it. This masking. Um, a few cool things to note about the healing effect on this, um, like the brainstormer on the first the, that I mentioned in the first slide. This card is not limited to just once per turn. Or even your turn. So if you ex are able to accelerate on your opponent's turn, or if you accelerate multiple times, this effect can trigger many times in the same battle step. Um, the timing of it also, because accelerate, you clock yourself as a cost. You, so it, you can be at X3 and use this effect. Because accelerate will clock you up to 4 damage, and then this will see that you have 4 cards in your clock, and you can pay the one to heal it. Um, it also gets pretty crazy if you have two of these maskings out. You can actually end up net healing off of your Accelerate. With two maskings, you can clock yourself with an Accelerate and then heal twice, which is hilarious when it happens. Yeah, as long as you can still meet the four or more condition when you're paying for it. Yeah, it's only happened a few times playing this deck, but I mean, it's, it's still really like... good. Like turning accelerates into pay ones is just very strong. Uh, you have to pay one up front to have this card on the board, but it, I mean, we already you already preached about the three K power being good. I think it's extremely good reason to like actually play the ass deck. Mm hmm. Um, I found it like the times when I there probably when I'm at like two six is when I found myself doing it. Or, yeah. Or like two five accelerate to two six heal down heal, two. heal down because that's when the accelerate really starts kicking in at level two. So pretty cool. And the uh, I'm one of these supreme music Pareos teched in. It is a bottom deck bomb for your opponent's higher level characters. So an early play killer. Uh, really nice that it can come down at level one. Uh, also has an accelerate effect. Our only accelerate effect at level one. Uh, beginning your climax step, you can put a music character from your waiting room into the bottom of your clock. It's not from top of deck. That lets you look at the top card of your deck, put it either back on top of your deck or into the waiting room, and stock a character from your waiting room. This pairs really nicely with um, one of the level twos I'm going to talk about next that uh, clocks you from top of deck. You can kind of check the top card with this, make sure it's clean, uh, get your free stock off the accelerate, and then. Put that top card into your clock. Moving but on to level two. Yeah, always a good idea to have some sort of anti change. And Ras doesn't have an anti change counter, so. Or they do, I just don't run it. Uh, level two. Yeah, at level two, uh, three copies of On Stage Layer. Um, when she attacks, she gets 1,000 power times the number of other music characters you have. So if you have full field, she's going to be swinging for at least um, 11,000. And really important accelerate effect on this, too. Um, when it gets the reverse, you, she gets 1,000 she gets extra power and on reverse, blind stock Top parts two. of your deck. Yeah. It, it's, it would be a lot better if it was from right, waiting room off. Obviously, you don't want to, you know, clock clean damage, but you have ways to pay it out on your opponent's turn. Then, so it's not too bad. It's it's very uh, the the power of this card is really contingent on the event, right? Because I, I think so. Like the most um, notable thing about playing the deck, I feel, is Ras has a lot of ways to 
like manipulate the, the the cards that are going into and out of its stock and clock at like the rate at which cards are going in and out of those two zones. Like every every band has its own theme, kind of, you know. Yeah. Like Roselia has resonate, and Hello Happy World is just a bunch of retarded events. <laughs> like Pastel Palace is five colors, or all colors. Mm-hmm. But um, that's kind of like the theme of Ras. I feel is like your accelerate effects can kind of like either make you take more damage if you want to level up or throttle your damage to live longer. Or you can like pay out stock to heal, or you can ramp your stock by ten damage. You kind of have complete control over like how you fluctuate those two zones. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Um, but yeah, the fact that this stock charges too. When we get to the event, um, you'll see why. Because I'm sure a lot of people are looking at this, being like, "Why? Why would you run this?" Or whatever. It's like, yeah, sure, it'll get the reverse and like blind stock too. I have to clock myself, sounds pretty whatever, but like when you see the event, you'll understand why. Because even if you do end up blind stalking climaxes, it's not going to matter too much. Because uh, ideally, your opponent won't be doing much damage to you at all. Yeah, there's um, there's like a few different two ones in Wrath actually that do like a similar thing to this card. There's like another two one that's almost identical. Like it's has a similar accelerate effect. It gets a thousand power bigger, but only stalks you one card. Mm-hmm. So I, I figured losing a thousand power for an extra stock was definitely worth it, especially when you have like the um, masking and a bunch of level zeros that can pump on attack. Yeah. And um, next card is not too exciting, just this 3k backup. Um, it's really only in the deck to search when you need it, um, with either the next card I'm going to talk about or off your level one combo. It's the fact that it's a raised Sulan character is the only reason it's there, really. Just a backup that you can search. And the, the only other backup that Raz has access to right now is only for 1,000 power. So I feel like this actually can help you win a lane. That's why I'm using this instead of the 1-0 the backup. Mm-hmm. All right, well, moving on to that event package. Yep, this is probably like the the main combo, I guess, quote unquote combo in the deck. This is the whole goal in deck building was to just abuse this setup. So how it works is the lock early plays if you have a full field of Razor Sulan characters. So definitely makes it difficult to splash other bands in. Like you mentioned the maybe wanting the Kokoro earlier, but everything yeah. kind of just needs to be RAS if you want to consistently get this early play off without having to, you know stretch your resources too thin and uh just gets a passive power boost of a thousand power if you have two other characters um but the accelerate effects the real cool thing about it so on the turn you play it you can accelerate and on attack with it not on reverse but on attack it gets 1500 extra power and search your deck for two razor sulon characters or yes you guys are the best event which is the card to the left here. Um, You can get two in any combination. You can grab two events, two characters, one of each. Um, And the fact that it's on attack means your opponent can't even anti-change you to stop it. Even if they anti-change you, you still get your plus two. Which is... If if this was like an on-reverse effect, I don't know if I would have even bought into Rass and tried to build this deck. But the fact that it's on attack and gets around anti-change is very appealing. Um, and the event card that goes with it is a 2-2 counter that says choose one of your opponent's characters in battle, and it gets minus two souls for a turn. And uh, you can optionally choose to draw and discard if you'd like. Um, this kind of uh, funnels back into the stock and damage manipulation I was talking about earlier, where you can use the, um, what's her name, the onstage layer at level two, to generate a whole bunch of extra stock to get you two stock from the top of your deck and then use that two stock on your opponent's turn to get a guaranteed cancel on one of their attacks. Um, it's, it's just a really nice way to be able to manipulate damage throughout the game and gives the deck a very defensive top end. Yeah, it's... Lots, uh, lots of healing and damage canceling. It's really good at level two uh like the longer the game drags on i think the worse it gets 
and I think we we talked about this a bit, like one of the only uh, drawbacks I think to it because unlike a normal neg soul, you can't spread it. Uh, it's, it's minus two to a single lane. Your opponent can like swing in for a lot, and then you're like, if your deck's not in a good spot and you were counting on this to sort of actually mitigate damage, then your opponent's just swinging for better numbers on you. So it really depends. It's contextual. As long as you use it correctly, it's still very good. But yeah, so like, you have an actual finisher though, so you're not like relying on this to actually grind out the game. It it's you really do use it mostly at level two. And sometimes at level three too. Um it like how should I put it? Like your opponent can kind of play around it since it only chooses a character in battle, so they can like like if they have a finisher or something that's gonna like they they can kind of use the minus two soul to their advantage to you know, hit you for exact damage, or, um, you know, maybe swing one of your open lanes first, so you can't use the counter right away. But um, it definitely is, it's not so much a card that you use just as, like, a panic button to save yourself, but it's one where you, there's a bit more setup to it. You go into, like, how I like to use it is I go into the attack step, my opponent's attack step, like, one of these or two of these in my hand or something. And my opponent attacks one of my characters, and then I wait for their trigger and see how much damage they're dealing. And I try to time this when they're hitting me for two damage. Yeah, you so, just try to delete swings for two. Uh, yeah, you, you use it more reactively. You like kind of look at the damage they're hitting you for, and then decide if you want to use it. If they're swinging for one, it's probably not worth it. If they're swinging for four or five, you know your deck state better than I do. But mm -hmm. you know, assuming you're at a reasonable level of compression, then you probably just you want to should cancel that, and yeah. probably cancel it. But yeah. So, you, kind of depending on your deck state, you kind of want to use it... You, you don't want to be forced to use it. You want to use it on your terms. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it, it does open up that Hail Mary play. Like, yeah. all right, well, I'm at, like... It's not I as... Uh... It. I'm, like, at high level three. You know, hopefully I can just live. It's not as, like, Hail Mary as a money counter, but it's still very good. Yeah, it's just, you want to be very reactive with how you use it. You don't want to just have it as, like, a panic button. You definitely want to time it yeah. when you're comfortable playing it. requires it. a little bit more finesse than it might seem. And that's, uh, that's actually why I have all four copies of it. I've looked at a few RAS lists, like, on Encore decks. Um to see what other people were messing around with. And usually I'll just see people run like one or two of this event. Um, I like having all four copies because it's kind of like a linchpin of my end game is just kind of tanking up with this and preventing damage. Also, I want to make sure there's always one in my deck to search. And hell, even searching two of them is a super punishing play when it's depending on the board state. Yeah, um, depending on where your I, opponent ends up. No, I don't, I don't want to, like, be on this slide too long, but I, I, this is, like, the whole, you know, payoff for the Raz deck, I feel, is this little package. Uh, um, and one other thing I want to mention is the... You can loop this turn after turn. I call it the, the lock loop. I well... Turn, PM. <laughs> provided um, your lock lives. 10Ks, uh... Well, dinky. actually... Well, actually, go back and read the card. It actually doesn't work that way. You can only accelerate the turn the lock is played. Mm. So if it lives back to your turn, like you're winning board, that's like why the counter's there. And you know, well, you can always you know, grab another one back. off the search. But. Yeah, but that that's where the loop comes because you get to search two cards in any combination from your deck. You can search another copy of this lock and any other card. Right? You could search one of these events to help stay at level two longer to extend your two game. You could search for another copy of the 2-1 uh, the layer that gives you two stock from the top of your deck to help kind of refund some of your stock. Um, you can kind of... If you just search another copy of lock and then something else, you can just do this turn after turn after turn, which is pretty appealing. In a perfect world. <laughs> In a perfect world, but you get two of anything. So, like, sometimes I like to grab like, two of the events, like, if I already have a shitload of stock, and I know that they're probably going to push me to level three next turn, and I want to go for my finisher, or, like, 
maybe I'm mid-level three and just need to cancel for my life next turn, maybe I'll search two events instead. Or if I'm not in a position where I think I'm going to be able to counter next turn, like if I'm crashing my other two lanes or something, I'll maybe grab a couple copies of my finisher or something else. Mm -hmm. it, it's definitely really versatile, and you can just get what you need at the moment. And if you're clever, you can really uh, set up some very punishing board states. Very fun combo to use. All right. But that's enough about that. Rounding out level twos, I have uh, two more event cards. Change the world. Um, need a music character to play it. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and has two effects. You choose one of them. You either search your deck for any music character and add it to your hand. Or you can give 3,000 power to one of your characters and also add this card to your stock. So I, I like the fact that it stock charges you, especially going into your level two turn, which is probably a little bit stock heavy since you need to play probably the two one layer and the lock. Yeah, I mean um, it, the 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 floor is that it's a drop search. Like it's so fine. The, yeah, the, the fact that you can use it to either get a free stock and like that extra three thousand power to get the reverse, or that you can just cash it out for whatever you want, it makes it a really good card, I think. Mm -hmm. Um another reason I have it in the deck as opposed to like other copies of level ones or whatever is specifically because of the um one of the first cards we talked about, the um what's her name? Raise your hands, chew two. The the one that does the uh reveal top card of your deck and salvage a character of that level. You just wanted more level two. Yeah, I just wanted I just wanted a, a higher ratio of uh level twos. Mm -hmm. To to help me always get what I need. And to be honest, I really like this card in general. I think like other Bang Dream decks, other bands could splash this card and it would be a good addition if you have room for it. Because I know a lot of Bang Dream decks will run like a lot of toilets, a lot of warehouses, the Lucky Buns event. Yeah, um, it's space, unfortunately, so way too cloggy, tight. You can get kind of cloggy on events, but this is like, this cues off of music characters, not Wrath. So you can actually use this in um, in any band. Normal deck, yeah. All right, well, getting right into the last card here, the finisher. Yep. Uh, pretty boring. Yeah. Uh, I wish Raz had something better. Um, it just gets 500 power for each of your other characters. Um, climax combo, clock kick on reverse. Pretty old school. Oh, it also heals at the end of turn. So even if you're at, like, 3-0, you can accelerate and then still get the heal afterwards or, like... Heal you off your refresh point. Yeah, similar since to you Mocha. At the end of turn, you can like do like go through the rest of your deck and take your refresh point and then heal it. Um, usually, I think that's kind of like like I think in Afterglow, it's not really a big deal. The end of turn thing never really feels like a huge. It's deal. it's to set up your uh, sets up your alarms. By alarms, mean, yeah. Your your yeah. beginning of climax phase alarms. It. it I don't feel like the alarm effects are very good in Afterglow, to be honest. Depends what they are. I mean, they're not as good as Accelerate, like, because it's not as big of a deal to have a card on top of your clock. Yeah, you're taking take extra damage. damage in addition to it, so... I think Raz gets definitely the better effects and the better usage out of the end-of-turn heal. You, you can't... Mm. Kind of, like, one of the most awkward things with Accelerate is you end up at, like, level 3... And you have healers, right? A lot of yeah. accelerate decks will have healers at the top end, and then it's like I'm at three zero. I don't really want to be taking more damage. Yeah. So, but this lets you be at three zero and like accelerate and heal again. Yeah, you you can go from like two six clock to three, and then still be able to accelerate and heal it. Or it, it opens still up some you... options. Yeah, it opens up a lot of options. And it's bar. You're gonna have it. You're gonna trigger a bar. Like, you'll see this combo. Only three because, like, again, it's kind of boring. Rather go into the level two stuff heavier. Um, which yeah, you can I see think looking at the whole list here, it's uh, seven level threes, a lot more level twos. If if you really wanted another copy of the uh, finisher layer, you could probably turn the um one of the level two change the world events into another copy of this. But mm -hmm. I just 
that's what I had initially, but then I just cut one for another change the world because change the world can search for whatever um, you need your finisher. And since you're kind of like making a beefy field at level two, you're not always going to get, you know, try field reverse. Can't always set it up perfectly. But looking at the whole list overall, uh, a lot more variety than the other lists. You have a lot of filter and ways to get into other cards, so you can run a more varied level zero, especially level two. Lots of different cards here. Um, but yeah, it's the new Bang Dream Band. Has a very yeah, interesting, mean, unique play style. Uh, definitely a super unique play style. I don't think I've ever played anything else like it. Um, and even for a band deck, I, I think the, the floor for the deck is pretty high. Considering that um, you're running eight plusing triggers, that really helps out a lot. To you know, yeah, you're not like some of the jank factor of the deck. Yeah, you're not like relying on what is it like stocks all combos or wind or God knows whatever else. Yeah, I, I feel like what um uh what I'd like to see for Ras and like the next set because I think this deck's super fun and I would love to see it raise it too long get more support when they inevitably release the next Bang Dream set. Um, I think a, a level 2 combo would feel really good in this deck. Um, you guys would slot right in. Like, instead of yeah, running a level yeah, so 3 combo. The, the other option for top end and Wrath at the moment, you're limited. There's just two. There, there's Clock Kicker, and then there is a, um, the... the the trial I don't deck. Know these characters' names. The layer. The layer in the trial deck. The level three, which I think is also a claw kicker, but you pay three. Yeah, climaxless. But it's climaxless, and considering like at level two, you're not really fielding multiple uh, locks anyway, since you you need to feel a full field to early play it, so it's difficult to play two. You kind of have like other cards you can play at level two around it. Mm -hmm. So it'd be really nice to be able to slam some two one combo that was pretty good, and then an early play lock, or maybe something that was more defensive. That's something what I like would that. really like yeah. to do. When when I tried to build the deck, I, that's what I was looking for. I was looking for good level two combos, not just in Razor Sulan, but like throughout Bang Dream. But it, it just wasn't. I didn't find anything that was worth like wrecking the consistency of the deck for. Yeah, well, we have, uh, what is it, Morphonica is like a new band. I, I'm sure Girls Band Party 3 is on the way. <sighs> More bang. Probably. They're getting the boy band, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, the boy band. I forgot about that. That was, like, that was announced around like WGP last year. But, yeah, just to wrap up, same links we throw at the end here. Andy and I have been talking for 38 minutes now, so we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, Discord. I'm sorry. I, sorry, as gushing. It's just such a cool deck. <laughs> yeah, I'm no. Like, I'm I mean, proud of this one. Now we actually have like time. Now that we're not overstressed. If you guys haven't seen the channel update, we were we were really like running ourselves ragged with content updates, and now we can sort of put out stuff more that we want to do, go more in depth and stuff and stuff like that. We have more time to record, especially because real things are opening back up again, whether they should or not. So, but yep, yeah, that's it. Pittsburgh Y Schwartz. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.